I think one of the greatest demonstrations or illustrations of the Trinity is actually provided by Carl Sagan, who is the most famous atheist of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, right? You know, where we think of in the, the 2000s and in, and you know, the 20 teens, and, and we think of like, you know, names like Richard, Richard uh, Dawkins, um, Daniel Dennett, R Sam Harris, um, uh, uh, Christopher Hitchens. Um, these are the names that we think of as like the, the champions of atheism, but in back in the sixties and seventies and eighties, it was Carl Sagan. So, uh, let's listen to him. I, I think he provides just the most beautiful illustration of the Trinity without knowing it. Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean, absolutely flat and that we live appropriately enough in a flat land, a land designed and named by Edwin Abbott, a Shakespearean scholar who lived in Victorian England. Everybody in Flatland is, of course, exceptionally flat. We have squares, and circles, and triangles, and we all scurry about, and we can go into our houses and do our flat business. Now, we have width and length, but no height at all. Now, these little cutouts have some little height, but uh, let's ignore that. Let's imagine that these are absolutely flat. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. And the three-dimensional creature sees uh, an attractive, congenial-looking square, watches it enter its house, and decides in a gesture of interdimensional amity to say hello. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third... So this apple, imagine this apple, this is like God, right? This, this is just perfect. This is just perfect. Imagine imagine the apple is, is God, right? Like, you, you'd look around, you can't, you know... Well, let's keep listening. Dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his inside. See, like a that's... A voice from within. That's, I would say, exactly like he the experience of God. He is getting a little worried about his sanity. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration. And so he descends. This is great, to right here. Actually, enter this is great. Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in Flatland mm. only partially. Only a plane, a cross section through him, can be seen. So, when a three-dimensional creature great. first so reaches good. Flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen, and we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad. And look at this look at this this is this is the placing that image this is maybe the best illustration of the trinity right so from uh, so god's a higher dimensional reality than us we're a lower dimensional reality right and so from a particular perspective the apple looks like four separate things right here right four one two three four the, the to the to the two dimensional square here he he sees four separate objects four completely separate things but that's because he has a limited perspective. He doesn't, he can't un comprehend. If you tried to explain to the square how these four are one, he'd, he'd be baffled by it. He'd be perplexed by it. That's impossible. I see four. How can you tell me those four are one? And I would say that is exactly the experience that we have in trying to, uh, trying to, to understand the Trinity, right? From a perspective, they look like three separate things, but we are told by God, and he has the perspective of three dimensions. He has the perspective or, or, or multiple dimensions. And so we just are called to trust him on this, that these three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are one in a way which we can't even wrap our mind around, much like this little square. So let's keep listening. In Flatland. And as the apple were to descend through, slither by Flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices which we can represent by cutting the apple. So the See, square. now it appears like one. 
As there's one circle. On. The four are now he one. You see, as it as it descends into that lower realm. Mysteriously reality. appear from nowhere, and inside a closed room, and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion, and so not such a friendly gesture from dimension to dimension, makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above flatland. At first, the square has no idea of what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. Right, this is what I would say. This is exactly while, the experience of prophets and apostles and, uh, you know, many men as they encounter God. They just get this. And by the way, this is why, like, things like Revelation are so bloody confusing is because it's like you're trying to, well, uh, he's going to try to explain this dimension to his friends here in a minute. Well, well I, maybe I should hold off. Let's listen to this. He comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in Flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing Flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Getting into another dimension provides as an incidental benefit a kind of X-ray vision. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was right. in... Some other He's trying to explain it, but he can't, because it's, it's beyond the conception. And of... they will pat him on his side and comfort him, or else they'll ask, well, show us, where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it, and the poor square will be unable to comply. But maybe more interesting is the other direction in dimensionality. What about the fourth dimension so anyway so we'll pause there but like that i think that's really remarkable i think that's i mean you think about it like right and like this is this is what describes daniel and revelation all of these like very strange depictions of god in the throne room and angels and many-eyed creatures with multiple faces and it's like it's all it's it looks like something right out of an acid trip or something like that it's very confusing but isn't that exactly how those other flatland creatures experience um, experience, uh, uh, you know, the description of the third dimension, right? So I think this is exceedingly glorious in both describing the Trinity and describing prophets, uh, uh, apparitions of God and eternal life and all of those things. So just wanted to share that with you. I think that's just super, super interesting. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care and God bless. And by the way, uh, love to connected with you on Twitch. That's my main platform. Um, some people are YouTubers that dabble on Twitch. I'm a Twitch streamer that dabbles on YouTube. So uh, we have Bible studies um, five days a week, um, every weekday, and a bunch of uh, church services on Sunday. So the only day I, I oftentimes don't stream is, is Saturday. So uh, yeah, come check us out. Would love to love for you to be a part of our community. Twitch.tv slash Pastor Brock VR. I'll leave the, the link in the description. Take care and God bless. We'll see you next time.